Hi guys, welcome along to the latest edition of Build With Any's project series. As you've seen from the past videos, we've been doing a lot of work here at this property in Leamington, and now the next stage is the bathroom. So I'm currently underneath it, as we've got sparkers upstairs, busy away getting the first fix in for the lighting, which will enable us then to get all the stud work up, because we want to overboard the ceiling first. Alex has finished pointing up these pockets in there, and he's just finishing the last one over there. All right, out. All right, mate. So what we'll do is I'll show you the plans of what we're going to be doing. We like to use tablets on site. Uh, we use Dropbox, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Just keeps everything all in order. And as I'm sure you're aware, plans change quite often. So it's a good way rather than having loads of bits of paper, we just have it all on a tablet and then it's all easily transferable. You know, everybody's kept in, in touch with what's going on. So let's go bathroom layouts. Here we go. So this is the proposed plan for our bathroom upstairs. We've got the coat room up there. There's a landing way here, which uh, will bring you in from the house of here then bath basin well vanity unit toilet airing cupboard here and a walk-in shower here uh, yeah like I say these sparkies are upstairs now just fixing all the lighting because what we like to do is overboard the ceiling first and then fit the stud up to it helps with any sound transfer because obviously all these studs will be insulated as well with soundproof insulation that's about it for now what I'll do is as usual we'll set up some videos and keep you updated with all the progress throughout this So as you've seen, the sparkers have been in and they have done all the first fixing that we need for now. Basically just pulling the lighting cables through because like I mentioned, we need to get the ceiling overboarded first before we put the stud work up. So they've got all their cables in position now so we can overboard this and then they can do all their relevant holes and pull the cables through. So the next stage is the floor. As you can see, some of it is down. It's only temporarily down. This board's fixed here, but the rest of it now has got to be fitted properly, glued and screwed. So I will show you this process next. So you can see this product that I'm using here. This is called Cablefix D4. It's basically an expanding glue that we use to put down when we're putting down any floor. You run it out along the joist like this. Yeah, and as you can see, this is starting to cure now. It comes out like a, like a honey. And then once it goes off, it expands. So you screw that down as well in addition to that. And then it obviously fills in any voids or anything like that and prevents any squeaking. Also, you've got to wear gloves because if you get this stuff on your skin, it doesn't come off. Your skin has to come off with it for it to come off. So I'll whack this board down and screw it down and we'll carry on. So I've got my floor down. I've got my gloves on to keep my hands protected. Once it gets on your skin, sorry, it's not coming off like I mentioned. So what we're going to do is get all these joists marked out now. That way we know that when we screw through here, we're going to get a positive fix in with our screws. Mark out equal increments all the way over and then screw this board down.
So, good progress has been made today in the bathroom. We have one overboarded ceiling in here. Uh, we were going to overboard this ceiling, but as you can see, the air tray which runs around this window is actually quite tight up. So if we'd have double boarded this, or overboarded, sorry, the ceiling that's there, we would actually have come over the top of the architrave. So there's not much gap there, so we would have lost some of the architrave. So we made the decision to basically take the ceiling down, as it's only a small section, take this down, then we can just put a single skin of plasterboard over that then, so it'll be a much better finish, and we're not going to lose the architrave. And also this area, which was here, was the original lath and plaster, which was a lot thicker. So again, obviously that had to come down just to make our lives a lot easier. It's a much better job. You can see exactly where everything is. You know, it's, it's a much better way of doing things. And also there's a small section up in that corner as well, which we had to take down. And because of where the lights are gonna go, the, if you can imagine the stud wall is gonna go here for the shower. So we want these lights to be dead center of the, the shower area. And there was actually a joist running across there. So we'll have to cut the joist out and put a trimmer in and a hanger and then move it across. So we've got enough space then to get everything in because we obviously want to make sure everything's central and looking nice and true through the middle of that. So tomorrow we will aim to get that ceiling in there plastered, get some of this stud work up here. Well, probably get all this stud work built up here and also in there. So yeah, that's, a, that's about it for today. I'm going to go home and clean myself because I'm covered in horrible plaster and a laugh from Victorian days. So see you tomorrow. So as you can see, there's been a lot of progress in this room. We've got a lot of stud work up all across here, here and here. The shower area is pretty much ready for tanking and plastering. The shower tray is going to go in today. We've got our valves in and our pipe work ready for our courtesy shower and shower head. Shelf's going to be going in here. This area here will actually support a full height backlit sculpture, which is going to look really, really nice. And then this area here will actually hold the tile rail. It's going to be a floor to ceiling recessed area there, which will mirror this area here. And then there'll be a door here into the airing cupboard, shelving in that bit there. Now, as you can see on here, we've made a hole here, which a cabinet's going to sit in um, with some nice doors on. So that will all be recessed into the wall to finish flush with the tile. There's going to be a vanity unit here, toilet there as well, wall hung toilet, as you can see the cages in. And then in here will be the cloakroom, so the stud areas up here, ready to take this cage. There's going to be a basin just here, and that's about it for this room. So what I'll do, as usual, set up a time lapse and you can watch us through the day. Right, what I want to show you now is a little trick. See how this timber is true down here, look, running flush and then it kicks back in. Obviously the timber's not always going to be straight. Yeah, so sometimes you're going to get this sort of issue. So here's a little trick. All you need to do, get a screw, stick it in the side like this, which is kicked back. Get another screw in the position that you want it to be in. Yeah, so I'm going to be screwing this bit of timber to there, so I'll screw through that side. Get a hammer, place it on there, and pull it across. As you can see that, it pulls the timber to where you need it to be, so it gives you a lot more maneuverability. You could clamp it and stuff like that, but this is a lot much easier way of doing it. Hold it like that. Screw in, and there you go. See, timber's nice and flush. Easy as that. So, you've just seen Joe. Hi Joe. Hiya. He has been chasing this bit of wall out here. The reason we're doing that is because in this cloakroom or the toilet, it's quite tight for space. So when we dab this wall here, we need to make sure that these pipes are recessed into the wall. That just gives us a few extra centimetres of movement in here so we can get the board tighter back to the wall. 
if we'd have just punted them straight on, by the time the board's on, at least two inches off the wall, so you're gonna lose that from the width of this room. So it's really important that we've done that there just to give the client a bit extra space in the room. So this area here is going to be the shower area. So what we need to do is put this shower tray here onto that floor down there. So our shower tray, which is here, is approximately 22 mil thick, okay? So this is why we've recessed the floor down here. Yeah, see how there's a step difference there? So what this means is when we put the shower tray in here, the two floors can run through because this will all be tiled and this will be tiled as well. What we need to take into consideration though is the clients are having electric underfloor heating. So what needs to happen is this mat in here will be glued down to the floor like so, yeah? And then the wire for the electric underfloor heating goes through these little nobles here. So obviously we need to allow for this because it's gonna change, alter the difference in height between the two areas. So what we're doing is, because we've got old joists in here, we're gonna put some adhesive down and then the tray will be bed down on the adhesive. Okay, that way then we can make sure it's perfectly level and it comes through at the right height, allowing to make sure there's no difference in these two floor levels whatsoever. As we're putting adhesive down on timber, it needs to be primed with a suitable primer. In this instance, we're using the Mapoi product, Primer G. Yeah, it's an awesome acrylic-based primer, which will stop any delamination from the adhesive. So this stuff, really easy to put down. Okay, literally just pour a bit on, like so. And then use a brush or a roller to work it into the timber. It's really important that you actually do this, because if you were just put a diesel straight down onto wood, all that's gonna happen is, because it's quite porous, it's gonna dry off the adhesive that touches that while the rest of it's still wet, so you're gonna get delamination, which means basically the adhesive is not gonna stick to this. That'll cause you lots of problems down the line. The main issue being is that your tray isn't actually gonna be stuck down, it's just gonna be sat there, so if there is any discrepancies anywhere, what could happen is the tray could rock, and if the tray rocks, once you've got it all tiled, all the grout's in, all that's going to happen is your grout is going to crack. Obviously there's a few processes that are going to be involved. It's going to be tanked, then it's going to be tiled. So to remedy any cracks or anything like that, if you've got that sort of movement, you're going to end up ripping the whole lot up. So it's very important that you don't miss this stage out. As you can see, all I'm doing is just putting the primer on the and just working it into the substrate like that, just making sure all of it's covered. So wherever the adhesive touches, it's gonna stick, and it's gonna do its job properly. And we're sure then that it's gonna do exactly what we want it to do. Splash more on that. Like I said before, just work it into every bit. Make sure you've got full coverage. You can get these edges as well, just to ensure it's doing what we want it to do. Bit more in this area. If it's extremely porous the surface, it might be worth giving it two coats. But as this isn't a very porous surface, we'll see how quickly it dries. If it doesn't dry too quickly, then that means the absorption rate is not that, that high, so there'll be no need for a second coat. There you go, easy as that, that's done. Like I say, just let that dry and then we can get it all bedded down.
So, as you've seen, the plumbers and sparkers have been in and finished their first fix. So, we are ready now for plastering. I've got all the walls gritted, like so, like so. There's bits in here I can't do because the plumbers have just recently stuck this down and I don't want to stand on it yet. I can't cover it, so I don't want to grit any of the walls in here, but that'll be done first thing on Monday. We've got all this wall plied here. The reason being is because there's going to be a, quite a heavy vanity unit hung on there. We want to make sure that there's no collapse in any plasterboard and also we've got some excellent fixings using this 18mm ply. That will never go anywhere. Our cages are fitted in the small toilet over here. The cage is fitted in here as well. This will now form the, the new sill. It was originally going to be down here, but because we put in an extra vent, which I'll explain more in a second, we've raised this up so the whole sill will just be one complete shelf. It's going to look really nice there. Basin's going over there. Toilet there, like I said. Um, like I mentioned about the extra vent, what we've done is, because we've got a toilet there and a toilet there, and they're running down onto one run, potentially is a risk that when you flush one of the toilets, it will actually pull the water from the other toilet pull it through because of the suction. So what we've done is we've vented one through here, as you can see, and that runs straight there to the vent. And then the other one is vented just past it and then returns up to the same vent here. So what that actually does is prevent any suction because all it's going to suck is air, which is what we want. We don't want, the last thing we want, sorry, is for any water to be pulled out when the toilet's not actually in use. The plasterers will come here on Monday, get all the plastering done to the stage we need it at, and then we can get other bits finished off then. So, what have you seen in this episode? You have seen us getting the floor down, you've seen us building the stud work, you've seen us plying, you've seen the first fixing on electrics and plumbing. That is about it for now. In the next episode, you'll see all the plastering being done and the second fixing starting. So, all the frames going in, the tiding going down, bath, lights, everything being fitted in here. So if you've enjoyed this video, make sure you press that like button and while you're there, subscribe as well and also turn on your notifications so you'll be notified every time that we post a new and exciting video. Take care, bye bye.